your fireflies. Did you see that? We will make this exact design in the video. Hey yo what is up fellow gamers. It seems like you all wanted me to come teach you about weapon design so here I am. Modern tech teacher Daniel UK will walk you through the general ideas when making a boss weapon. Make sure you've seen both episode 1 and episode 2 as you'll need skills mentioned in both. First things first, when you design a weapon you have to understand how it functions as a weapon. Boss weapons can vary from projectile launchers, AoE attacks, bladed weapons, and of course lasers. In this video we will make a weapon for a laser attack, since we learned it in episode 1. However, some weapons can be used with multiple attack types, we'll get to that later. Since we are using a ranged weapon, we have to decide how wide the barrel needs to be. If you recall from the laser tutorial, lasers can come in many sizes and should sync with the song well. I'll go with a medium sized one. Now that you've decided on the attack coming from the barrel, we will plan the rest of the structure. I highly recommend for some of you to take inspiration from sci-fi weapons. Now that you have a decent idea of a weapon in your head, it's time to start planning. Here I'll use a standard grey. After you've finished planning the structure with frames, it's time to layer out what you want to do exactly. Just like the block designs we did in episode 2, we will be using multiple shades of grey to organize what we want to do. I'm going to keep the standard grey for the frames, I'll use a lighter grey for a base that holds the weapon together, and a darker grey to fill in the middle portions. I'll fill in this empty in between area with docker blocks, this creates more depth in the overall design, and as a result looks better. At this point you should think to yourself, if the gun looks like a capable weapon, that doesn't look overly clunky. Sometimes you can stray too far from the concept of a gun, so the weapon gains a weird shape. Of course it's perfectly fine to add more layers than I did here I'll show examples of how you could add more layers to your design. Now that you've finished planning, it's time to start the more difficult part of the design, the detailing. We are going to again, start on the muzzle of the design. If you've seen episode 2 you will be familiar with the techniques I'll use. First thing, we will start planning all the sublayers for the design. Sublayers will help give the barrel shape, where the laser will be exiting. I'm using darker objects around the barrel, and especially in front to detail it more. Remember in tutorial 2, you don't want each sublayer to be too complex, you should use different color shapes to make detail. Watch how I use trapezoids to give shape to the barrel. Now we'll begin the inner detailing. I will use the same technique for the design as with the weapon. Repeat the steps of changing the brightness, putting on a higher layer, then copy and paste with different objects. You'll see me use this same step a lot of times so make sure you get familiar with it. Here I'll use different shapes, adding more angles increases the complexity of the design without being too object heavy. Though make sure you conform to tech angle alignments we went over that in episode 2.
I'll amplify the barrel by making it longer and more distinct. Copying and pasting circles like these create whole illusions. When you think you are done with the barrel detail, check if you spaced your detail out well. What I mean by that is every part shouldn't have too much detail, or too little detail. But everything doesn't have to have a very similar amount of detail. You can convey texture with detail density. Now that we are done detailing the barrel it's time to move to the next step. Before we start, not all weapons have bases. Actually a lot of weapons don't use bases. However in this tutorial I will be using them to help you where about the weapon will rotate. Since we'll use a circular shape it will help you determine where to rotate your weapon around. We'll decorate this base like the gears we did in tutorial 2. Repeat the steps of copying and pasting, changing brightness, and adding to a high layer. Repeating this process is fairly simple, so I will add some more things to it later on. As a result from copying and pasting a lot, the base looks less interesting. You have to realize that too much of a similar detail will reduce the overall complexity of the design which is bad. To avoid this, I will add a different layer of blocks on the sides. Since I'm adding a new element, you will need to use separate layers. I will come back to this area later. For the middle section I'm going to use the T2 layer in order to add a blending effect on the design. Creating a hole will allow me to put designs like water inside. It's practically the same steps, so I'll cut the part here. Now that we finished the base, it's time to detail the surrounding areas. Our frame is this area attached to the base. Of course detailing it will be in a very similar way with the barrel. Make sure to attach the barrel and work on the frame at the same time, to get a good reference. By referencing the barrel we can copy and paste the same details onto the frame of the weapon. This creates some consistency in the design. The detailing process will be similar to the barrel so there isn't much to say about. I spotted a layering mistake here with the squares. Making sure your layering is correct is a big thing as bad layering leads to messy design. Here I'm going to use what I call a detail barrier. If a section is too big to detail I will split it into multiple sections, where I can detail each one differently. Especially because the base covers some of the frame design I should keep in mind of areas I should indulge in detail. Since there isn't much to say I will show a time lapse of my detailing for the design. Skip to 1108 to see the finished product.
so the top frame is finished. But wait. It's time for a test. Pause the video right now, and try to do the bottom frame on your own. Once you are done continue the video. Ready? Start now. Here is what I made. If it doesn't look right I suggest you stick with a very similar pattern as the top. Reference it, just like we did with the barrel. But enough of that, it's time to start the next step. We are going to detail the darker portion in between the frames. I will call this the back portion, because we will use darker colors, to make this area feel behind the frame. By doing this, we create more depth in the design. Side note, we will not be doing the extra details mentioned earlier when planning. Right now I'm going to create a solid back portion. We will detail this in the same way we did with the rest of the weapon. The edges should transition nicely with the surrounding area. I will use multiple layers to help that transition. I'm currently trying to align all the darker parts of the wall. After that I can start detailing. Since I'm going to use 22.5 degree angle slopes to detail the inside, I'll have to align the edges so they match. You don't have to use 22.5 degree angles, but Robtop already provides you with slopes, so it's easier. Now we are ready to start detailing. As stated before we are going to do this in a very similar fashion with blocks. Imagine this like the pillars of a block design connecting two surfaces. I'm going to use the same technique with copy and paste, so this should be familiar. Because using too many of the same pattern will end up boring, I'll switch it up with lighter colors. It still uses the same technique. But the boringness is avoided. This is the finished design of all the detailing. The next step will be adding glow which you should be familiar with. Before we continue I have to show you a set of groups I use while dealing with glow. I use groups 1 to 10 for opacity values. Group 1 is 0 opacity, group 2 is 0 0.1 opacity, and so on. I will use these groups quite a bit so make sure you remember it. For the color, I'll choose a purple ish neon color. Hue in HSV is a very useful tool, especially when dealing with neon. My glow is always split into two categories. The small glow that surrounds the neon line and big glow that gives a hue effect. If you look at the groups I use I'll always use lower opacity groups for larger glow. Smaller glow usually has a higher opacity, and is more densely copy and pasted. By looking at it on the surface of the weapon, you can tell it's too desaturated. You can use the color button to adjust the neon, so it looks better. From now to 1610 I'm experimenting with neon designs. You can skip if you want, it's not that big of a deal, since you understand neon from the other tutorial.
With this other neon line I'm going to change the hue a little bit. Changing hue is very useful for creating more colorful designs. But now it's time for another test. This time you are going to do the rest of the neon all by yourself. Wait. Teacher Daniel UK, can you tell us a little bit more before we start the test? Okay. The rest of the neon is quite simple. Just copy and paste the same lines and juice hues more. I would advise you to use a lot of hue changes. The glow on the base should be handled similarly to the gears in episode 2. Make sure to watch your layers, especially in the middle of the base. Blah 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 blah. Okay you can stop now. Alright let's start and pause the video in 3, 2, 1, go. Here's my finished neon design. As you can see I used all but, of the things I mentioned. you didn't say anything. Shut up. Our next step is to add shading to the design with black glow. So our final step with building the weapon is the shading. I will use low opacity dark glow to add more depth to the design. The main areas I want to darken is on the bottom of the base, the surrounding base overlap, and the area in between the frames. Also if you've noticed I detailed the side objects on the base a bit more. I'll also add some shading under the end of the barrel here. That should be it for the dark glow. Our weapon is finished now. What next? Let's move on to the laser. I would just give you another test, but I've given too many today, so I'll let you relax a bit. I'm going to build the thick style laser beam shown in episode 1, but with a small twist. In episode 1 we built lasers with fixed ends, but since we are using the side of a barrel you don't have to build a circular pattern around it. I made a mistake later on with the colors. The colors I'm using are separate channels. You could use alpha groups if you wanted, but color channels allow for more precise tuning. Note that I still use circular glow. Circular glow is always a must, because of the hue effect it gives off. Also know that you can add the circular pattern if you want. From now on I won't commentate over the building process, skip to 2108 to see the finished product. And with that, the tutorial is finished.
I added in some pulsing to see the finished effect. Thank you for sticking through the tutorial, like and subscribe if you enjoyed. I'll be taking suggestions in the comment section, if you want to do backgrounds, boss design, boss movement, projectiles, attack pacing feel free to tell me below.